Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that's teaching this word of truth and sincerity. And peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the four corners of this earth. All right. As you can see on the camera, this is a response to Killer Mike's interview with the Breakfast Club. I'm only five minutes into it. And, um, you know, when we watch things, we watch through a spiritual lens and we filter things through the spirit and the scriptures. And um, Killer Mike and a couple of other people they always, uh, you know, they do like thought provoking conscience type interviews, you know what I mean? And um, watching this particular interview, they was going into how Killer Mike is opening up a black bank or whatever. And we're going to go into the uh, video and we're going to commentate. Uh, based off of what they was building on because it just proves that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, okay, from North, Central, and South America, you are the people that's written in this book. You are the Israelites. You are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's it it it's like clear as day. You know, we understand why the majority of the masses can't get it, can't receive it, because the Lord has blinded them. But it's evident, man. The more you talk, the more you complain about your problems, the more that you, you know, try to liberate yourselves, try to fight for justice, fight for equal opportunity. The more that you do this proves that you are the Israelites. Now let's get into it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. The neighborhood, a lot of times the way we hear our know, I mean our news disempowers us. So when you hear about the Tulsa, Oklahoma burning, all you hear is we've been victims. And that and that's absolutely true. But the grand evil, beyond that evil moment in which our town was burnt down, people were killed and forced out, the ultimate evil is they took away the opportunity we had created for ourselves. Black people that were going west and, and, and founded the, the, the neighborhood of Greenwood and Tulsa, they had founded their own teaching, theaters, hospitals. They had found their own residence. They had found their own way to... Um, to turn a dollar 36 times in that community. A dollar only stays in our community six hours today. And if you look at the results around us, we kind of just take whatever scraps fall off the table. We think that it's time we have our own table with our own chairs and we have our own house and our own for the financial institution. Now, what do All right. Now, it, it just goes to show, man. And see, our people don't know, and that's the purpose of us doing these shows, these videos, these electronic epistles, and us being out there on the highways and byways, because we are set up to teach you and show you, you are God's chosen people, man. You are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Because everything that the brother was just speaking of, expounded on, is written in the scriptures. And there's no other book, no other text, no other scrolls, tablets, hieroglyphs, no other uh, school of knowledge that shows you who you are. According to the um, shows what your history is. No other text, no other uh, school of thought shows you who you are. But the Bible expounds and elaborates and go in depth of who you are. 
All right. I hope I, my point was clear. No other school of thought, no other knowledge, no other book expounds on who you are and why you go through what you go through. The Bible does. We're going to kick it off with this. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children or the sons and daughters of God. The spirit represents the words of the Most High, the Bible, the prophecies, the law, statutes, and commandments. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit, our souls, who we are, how we live. So the words of the Bible bear witness with us, our actions, our deeds, our lives, everything that happens to us, that we are the sons and daughters of God. And what is another name for the children of God? Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah is the Hebrew way of saying Israel. Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, Allah meaning God or power. Israel. You so-called blacks, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, Guatemala, and Panama, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Argentinians, Chileans, Colombians, Uruguay to Uruguay, and Mexicans, indigenous Indians from North, Central, and South, South America. You are the Israelites. And what Killer Mike was speaking on, how the so-called white man destroyed our independence. He wiped out um, our established banks, hospitals, schools, whatever we try to make for ourselves, the so-called white man, he erases it. He does away with it to the point that there's nothing left of what we try to establish. And the reason why, see, no other knowledge or school of thought or book can tell you why, out of all people on the planet Earth, why do black people, so-called black people, so-called Hispanic people, so-called Native American, why do we go through it the most? Because we are God's chosen people. And we pissed off the Heavenly Father and His Son by disobeying his word. All right? And we're going to get into that. So now I want to go back to his video and I want to commentate. Yes, absolutely. Because okay. neighborhood, a lot of times the way we hear our, know, I mean, our news disempowers us. So when you hear about the Tulsa, Oklahoma burning, all you hear is we've been victims. And, that, and that's absolutely true. But the grand evil, beyond that evil moment in which our town was burnt down, people were killed and forced out. The ultimate evil is they took away the opportunity we had created for ourselves. Black people that were going west and, and, and founded the, the, the neighborhood of Greenwood in Tulsa, they, took, they had found it. They took away the opportunity that we made for ourselves. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What is a curse? A curse is the opposite of a blessing. A curse is great evils. A curse is adversity, tribulation. That's a curse. So, because we did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, our, our God, our power, all these evils came upon us. And, and that, that sums it up right there. So it's like, oh, now I understand why we always go into jail. Now I understand why we always being killed by the police. Now I understand why we live in these poor conditions. Now I understand why we always sick. 
Now I understand why whenever we try to establish something, the so-called white man uh, 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 sabotages it, somehow destroys it, corrupts it, infiltrate it, whatever. Because we disobey the words of the Lord. Read it on. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be. Cursed shall be thy basket, in thy store. So, Black Wall Street, Harlem, one hundred twenty fifth Street, and all the other places, so called blacks, established for business. The Lord said, "Evil shall be in thy in thy city." Evil shall thou be in the field. Evil shall be thy basket and thy store. So your basket is your business. Your store is your business. Whatever lands that you have, it's going to be evil upon it. Whatever cities you dwell in, it's going to be evil upon it. So that's why the so-called white man does what he do because we disobey the words of the heavenly father and his son. All right. Opportunity we had created for ourselves. Black people that were going west and, and, and founded the, the, the neighborhood of Greenwood and Tulsa, they had founded their own teaching, theaters, hospitals. They had found their own residence. They had found their own way to, um, to turn a dollar 36 times in that community. A dollar only stays in our community six hours today. And if you look at the results around us, we kind of just take whatever scraps fall off the table. We think that it's time. We kind of just take whatever scraps are fall off the table. We're going to get back to Deuteronomy 28. But when he had said that, that made me think of this. This is Luke chapter 16, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Lazarus represents the Israelites. This is an analogy, a proverb, a dark saying. So when the Messiah was telling this story, he was figuratively talking about us. All right. So there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Lazarus represents you so-called blacks. Hispanics and Native American Indians, indigenous Indians from North, Central, and South America. Why? Because aren't we the ones in the begging position? Aren't we the ones always seeking for justice, seeking for reparations, seeking for equality and justice for the ones that did harm to us, stole from us, murdered us? So it says, which was laid at the gate full of sores. Sores represents being impoverished. Sores represents being laden with diseases, plagued with diseases and sicknesses. Are our people going through those things? And it says, in desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. So Killer Mike has said, we was looking for the crumbs that fell off the table. We're seeking for the things, for the uh, uh, the seconds, the sloppy seconds of the so-called white man versus seeking for our own economic uh, success, being established in our own business, in our own entrepreneurship, right? Did not he say that? So it says, in desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. The rich man represents Esau Edom, which Esau Edom is the nationality of the Caucasian race today. All right. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So the dogs represents the heathen nations. And they further the affliction that the so-called white man put on upon us by opening opening 
um, businesses in our community by taking advantage of our people, further furthering the enslavement of our people, furthering the oppression of our people. That's how the dogs came and licked our swords. All right, let's get back to the video. It's in our community six hours today. And if you look at the results around us, we kind of just take whatever scraps fall off the table. We think that it's time we have our own table with our own chairs and we have our own house and our own financial institution. Now, what a so he said, it's time for us to have our own this, our own that, everything our own. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having your own business. There's nothing wrong with having skills, being doctors, being, you know, things that relate to, you know, helping your people. There's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. But what is wrong when you deny the Lord your God? That's what's wrong. When you put your life before Yahweh, which is the name of the Father in the Hebrew, and Yahweh Shah, which is the name of Jesus Christ in the Hebrew, who the world ignorantly called God in Jesus Christ. You put your life, you put the world before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that was our great uh, 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 mishap. That was our great fault because we chose to put our lives before the life of the heavenly father and his son. This is Haggai chapter one, verse nine. You look for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it did not blow upon it. Why say if the Lord of hosts, let me go a verse above. Haggai chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So the Lord told Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, to consider your ways. To think upon your actions. You protest. You march. You, you rebel. You make your own businesses. You try to, 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 to separate from from Esau Eden, which is the so-called white race. You try to separate from American society, but it always fails. Why? Let's read. Go up to the mountains and bring wood. Build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, save the Lord. So the Lord is saying to build his house, That he will be glorified, saith the Lord. But what do our people do? You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because my house, because because of mine house, that is waste. And ye run every man onto his house. So the Lord's house is waste. You're not focusing on building the house of the Lord, building the kingdom of heaven. And how do you build the kingdom of heaven? First and foremost, it starts with the men, the Israelite man. You have to repent. You have to seek after the Lord. And if the spirit falls upon you to teach his word, you have to go out there in the highways and byways and teach his word. The Israelite woman, you got to repent. All right. You have to rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord and be faithful to your, your Israelite man, whether he believes or not. And you have to be uh, 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 you have to be faithful to your Israelite man. You have to keep the commandments to the best of your abilities. And you have to teach your children to keep the commandments to the best of their ability, all right? And the Israelite children, they have to be taught in the ways of the heavenly father and his son and not conform to the ways of this world. 
That applies to the man and the woman as well. But once again, you put the ways of the Most High off. You don't care about the Most High's house. That's why we always fail as a people. That's why we always get the short ends of the stick. That's why we haven't gotten anywhere since we came out of slavery. All right? Um, that was it on that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all ways. All right? So the nation that we knew not is Esau Edom. All right? They was the ones that oppressed us and crushed us. That's why Black Wall Street was destroyed. That's why the neighborhoods that was considered the ghettos, the slums, is now gentrified. That's why anything that we establish in the society, the so-called white man takes out. Why? Because we denied the Lord our God. We put the Lord our God second. We put him third, fourth. Some people don't even believe in God. Some people to totally deny the Lord their power. All right? And that's why these curses are upon us. Verse 34, so thou shalt be mad for the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. And that's why we always pissed off. That's why we always protesting. That's why we always marching. That's why we always say no justice, no peace. Because we seeing everybody else having an opportunity in life to do what they have to do to establish their businesses, to take care of their families, not go to jail, always getting away with murder. But we, we getting killed just for living, just for being alive. Just trying to have a fair shake at life. Our people are catching hell because we denied the Lord our God. We turn our backs on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And for that, great evil fell upon our people. Next scripture, final scripture, verse 45, Deuteronomy 28 45. Moreover, all these curses, all these evils, shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And thou shalt be, and they shall, these evils, all right, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for, all, for the abundance of all things. And that's why all these punishments, that's why all this hell, that's why we can't get a break. We the first uh, fired and the last hired. We massively incarcerated. We massively sick. We dying from all these sicknesses. We killing each other, murdering each other, I mean. That's why we going through all this shit. Because you denied the Lord your God. But the water, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, there's hope. Because he promised, even with all this shit that's happening to us, that he's going to send his savior, his son. He's going to send his son to save us. To save an elect, a remnant, a chosen few. He's going to send a, 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 his, a, his son to save a chosen few, all right, 
from amongst these people that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. He's going to save us from these evils and the evils to come. All right. And this is what we hoping for. That that day comes soon. Sooner than we already believe. All right. He's going to save us from all this shit that our people are suffering and going through. And that's what we're looking forward to. But pretty much that's it, man. I pray, hope that you was edified. Leave your comments, do your responses. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rekha Kodash. Till next time I say Shalom.